It is more important that innocence be protected than it is that guilt be punished. For guilt and crimes are so frequent in this world. That's a quote from the man who wrote into our Constitution what the presumption of innocence means. His name was John Adams. He was the second president of the United States right after George Washington. Why is that quote important? Why is the presumption of innocence important? Why did that be get included in our great Constitution? Because we want to make sure that we don't accidentally send innocent people to prison. Innocent people don't get punished. I have the great honor of representing Diamante Kendrick, who's sitting in the gray vest at council table with me, along with my co-counsel, Doug Weinstein, Doug stayed up, so everyone can see. Also, you'll meet or hear from, at times, Katie Hingerty. She was here yesterday. She was the tall woman with blonde hair. And the three of us have the great honor and privilege of defending Mr. Kendrick. I've been practicing law here in Atlanta for almost 30 years, exclusively representing innocent people like Mr. Kendrick. He is not guilty. He is not guilty of every accusation and every count in the indictment that the state alleges. Let me say it a third time, just so you're clear. He is not guilty of every single charge against him. He is presumed innocent, as our great Constitution demands. And we won't have to prove anything to you, as the judge told you. The burden will always lie on the state. And boy, is it a high burden, beyond reasonable doubt. Now, it's not a mathematical certainty. The judge, Judge Granville, who's a great judge, by the way, and very smart, and knows the law really well, will instruct you as to all the law, not the lawyers will. But that beyond reasonable doubt standard is a tough standard for them to meet. And the evidence in this case against my client is so, so, so very weak. The state's not going to be able to come anywhere near the standard required. My client, Mr. Kendrick, grew up here in Atlanta in a tough neighborhood. He did not come from money. He was poor, hungry, deprived, socioeconomically disadvantaged. But he had a loving mother, a mother who's been with him the entire time of this case and will be every day. And she made sure that he had the best upbringing that he could. You heard Mr. Steele earlier talk about the disadvantage of how Mr. Williams was brought up. And my client had a similar upbringing. It was tough. Food, clothing were sparse. But he dreamt of a better life for himself and for his family. And through hard work, through creativity, Maybe a little luck and fortitude, he became a very successful musical artist, a rapper. Now, despite Mr. Kendrick's mom's best efforts, he did get into some trouble. And we acknowledge that. We don't hide from it. We don't skirt it. Mr. Kendrick, you'll find out, went to prison between 2015 and 2020. So the state is actually limited because during those years, he's locked up. He can't possibly be committing any crimes they've alleged. You'll also hear that he pled guilty to a crime right here in Fulton County in 2017 while he was locked up. And he admits that wrongdoing. He owns it. He paid his debt to society. But he also worked hard 
and obtain success in the music industry, and not just for fame or money. Mr. Kendrick did it because he wanted to give back to his community, a community that was disadvantaged. And that's exactly what he did when he got successful. He did tremendous civic duty. You'll hear evidence that he volunteered, he helped coach a youth football team, and he gave back to his community. He gave back because he knew it was the right thing to do. Now the state, and the evidence will show, the state, the police and the prosecution want to use Mr. Kendrick's past. They put it in the indictment. Despite having paid his debt to society, the state is going to use his prior conviction to try to bootstrap these old crimes that he's already paid his debt for to get you, to convince you that he's guilty of these new offenses. They're going to try to get a second bite of the apple, despite the fact that he served his time, that he pled guilty. They want you to find him guilty again because of a debt he's already paid. And that's not right. They can't prove, using actual evidence in this case, the new crimes that they're alleging in the indictment. So they have to get you to pay attention to the old past he left behind. The evidence will show that he is not guilty of the charges in the indictment and that the police and the prosecution's case is so incredibly weak. But they have to distract you with the old Mr. Kendrick, the Mr. Kendrick that paid his debt and pled guilty and served his time. It's like a bad magic trick. You ever see a bad magician who's like, look over here while they're picking your pocket? That's the evidence the state wants you to pay attention to. I've been involved in a lot of RICO and murder cases in my career, in almost 30 years of doing this job. But the judge told you, and the prosecution told you, this case is unique, different. Why? It's going to take months. There are going to be hundreds of witnesses. It is massive. It's definitely the biggest case that any of us have ever been in. Maybe the biggest case in the history of the state of Georgia. Why is that? Lots of murder cases, gang cases, RICO cases take one, two, maybe three weeks to try at most. Why is this case going to take months? I'll tell you why. Because the evidence will show the government has got to drag in hundreds of witnesses to dance around the weak actual case that they have. They've got to bring in five experts to tell you what a gang is. They've got to bring in an expert to tell you what an infinity is, an infinity automobile. They've got to bring in dozens and dozens of witnesses that are not going to say, Mr. Kendrick committed a murder. Mr. Kendrick possessed or sold drugs. Mr. Kendrick possessed illegal firearms. They're going to tell you everything under the sun that dances around the facts and hope that after hundreds and hundreds of witnesses, you're either so confused or so worn down that you'll believe the state's theory. If the case were direct and the evidence were true, it wouldn't take long to try. Because they bring to court someone to say, I saw Mr. Kendrick kill Donovan Thomas. They don't have that. And we're going to talk about what else they don't have, but they don't have enough evidence to prove my client guilty of any of these charges. And so to put lipstick on a pig, they've got to try and bury you with hundreds of hundreds of witnesses that won't tell you 
that my client's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Why not bring in someone to say, Mr. Kendrick's fingerprints were on a firearm. Mr. Kendrick's fingerprints were on a bag of drugs. Mr. Kendrick's fingerprints were in the infinity that was used to kill Donovan Thomas. Mr. Kendrick's DNA was present at the scene of the crime. There, why not bring in one witness out of the hundreds that you're going to hear from that will just say, I saw Mr. Kendrick do it. Why not? Because it doesn't exist. And our Constitution, and our set of laws, and our democracy demand more. They demand that high standard. You may not like Mr. Kendrick or any of these other defendants, but we are not here for a popularity contest. We are here to decide something so much more important. And the state doesn't have the evidence to do it. <coughs> Evidence doesn't exist, not real concrete evidence. The evidence will show that the state is trying to find Mr. Kendrick guilty by association. That's what they want you to believe. Because they want you to find him guilty because who his friends are. The evidence will show that he had friends, that he knew people, that he associated with people. I thought in America, we had freedom of speech, freedom of association in the First Amendment. But the state wants to present evidence to show you that those freedoms are not true, that the Constitution does not matter. They want to present evidence that Mr. Kendrick is guilty by who he hangs out with, <coughs> the color of the clothes that he wears, the symbols he makes with his hands, and the beautiful lyrics that he writes and sings. Those aren't actual crimes, that's just free speech. And that is what is on trial here, the First Amendment of the Constitution. They want you to look at evidence and say, these people are guilty because they exercise their right to free speech in America. That's not just wrong, it's un-American. Now, the evidence will show you in 2020 that when my client did get out of prison, due to his hard work, his talent, he became a famous rap star. Almost like buying a lot of You know, the chances of a young person going in the music industry and making it are very, very small. But that made him successful. He used his brain and his creativity and his really hard work to make his family and his mother proud. And the government wants to punish him for that success. They told you in their opening argument to find him guilty because of over acts. And they had the goal to tell you that those acts didn't even need to be crimes. Objection. Judge, that's what the evidence will show. That's what the state says the evidence will show. They told you that those overt acts don't even have to be crimes, but you should, as a result, find him guilty of criminal RICO. This isn't a civil trial, this is a criminal trial. And they told you he doesn't even need to commit a crime, that you should find him guilty of a crime. Does that make sense to you? Does one plus one equal three? Objection, misstatement, argument. I stand in the issues of that. Ladies and gentlemen, disregard counsel's last remark. What, what are the charges against? <coughs> Thank you. Right. What are the charges against Mr. Kendrick? The first and the biggest is a murder. We've heard a lot about the murder of Donovan Thomas Ray. Now, Donovan Thomas died, and it's tragic, and murder is wrong. The state had the nerve to show you an autopsy photo in opening argument, not because they needed to prove that Donovan Thomas died, 
but to exaggerate and scare. The objection, argument, not what the evidence will The evidence will clearly show. the same objection. The evidence will clearly show that Donovan Thomas died. We can see that. And it's a tragic occurrence. And my client and his family agree for the family of Mr. Thomas. We don't think it was acceptable. But my client had nothing to do with that man's death. He died because of a drive-by shooting at a barber shop on January 10th, 2015. And what happens next? The police arrest the wrong group of people. They admit they arrested the wrong group of people. You heard Mr. Sharp and Mr. Steele tell you about Kenneth Copeland and Demeke Garlington and the others who were arrested for this crime. And the police charged them. And what is the evidence that turned out that those people got their charges dismissed and Mr. Kendrick got charged instead? Are there fingerprints of Mr. Kendrick on anywhere at the crime scene, on the body of Mr. Donovan, in the car that was used, on a firearm that was used? Are there fingerprints anywhere that tie my client to that crime? No. What about DNA? Is my client's DNA anywhere related to the death of Donovan Thomas? No. What about ballistics? Is there, are you going to hear evidence that there is a match between the bullets or the gun used to kill Donovan Thomas that was a gun ever possessed by Diamante Kendrick? No. Are you going to hear from a single witness out of the hundreds of witnesses that are going to be brought here by the state? One. I beg you for one witness to come to court and stand right here on this witness stand and say to you, I saw Diamante Kendrick kill Donovan Thomas. No, that occurred. And the answer is resoundingly no, because my client is not guilty, ladies and gentlemen. He's an innocent man, wrongfully accused of a murder he didn't commit. And if that doesn't get you upset, I don't know what will. It makes me angry. Not one witness. There's videotape that the state will present of an infinity automobile driving by the bottle shop and being used to kill Donovan Thomas. Are you going to hear witnesses that say my client owned the infinity, rented the infinity, leased the infinity, was the rightful driver of the infinity? Nope. Will you hear or see evidence to the contrary? Oh, yes, you will. Shortly before Donovan Thomas dies, the state has another video of my client getting into, are you ready? A Pontiac Bonneville. Not an infinity, a Pontiac Bonneville. So, Will you see evidence? Will the evidence show that my client is Superman and can fly through the sky from one car to another? No, you will not. He is not Superman. Maybe he's Mr. Spock and he can teleport. You will not hear evidence of his ability to teleport from one car to another either. And yet, the state claims he's guilty of murder. Now remember, you heard previously about a man named Nicholas Robinson, whose real name is Spencer Wright. He came in and told the police, and they made arrests, of Mr. Copeland, Mr. Garlington, and others. The state's key witnesses. But you've also heard evidence that Mr. Copeland 
is a terrible liar and a terrible person and himself a gang member not to be trusted and not to be believed but that's the state's key witness who says oh yeah it wasn't me it was mr pendra and others why do we know he's lying not just because his lips are moving but because he was one of the people who was originally charged with the murder how naive does the state have to think you are to not understand that the incentive for Mr. Copeland to lie is as simple as, I'm charged with the murder. If I say someone else did it, then I don't get charged with the murder. It's, it's a ridiculous theory that they have, quite frankly. And the evidence is so super thin and super weak, it reminds me of nothing more than a Krispy Kreme donut. Thin air. In fact, Mr. Carlington, when he's interviewed by the police, says, yeah, I, I don't know who killed Donovan Thomas. They have no way to corroborate it. They have no actual evidence. The state wants you to buy into this theory of murder, and our Constitution demands you don't. They charged a bunch of people, the police, the Atlanta Police Department, figured out, oh, we messed up and got it wrong. But now we're going to charge a bunch of other people. But trust us this time. Does that view trust to you? Is that evidence that you'll hear about that seems trustworthy? No, it is not. That evidence is completely untrustworthy and unbelievable and unreliable. It's a bad magic trick. No fingerprints, no DNA. No witnesses, no ballistics, and videotape that actually exonerates and improves, proves that he's not guilty. Crispy <coughs> cream donut hole. What's the next charge against my client? Well, there's a bunch of them involving guns. And three, to be exact. One is that he's charged with possession of firearm during the commission of a felony. If you're committing some other felony, you're using a gun, you get charged with an extra charge. The second is possession of a machine gun. Ms. Love described to you, Mr. Steele described to you, fully, what a fully automatic weapon is. Pull the trigger once, all the bullets fly. That's illegal. And the third is possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Yes, Mr. Kendrick's a convicted felon. So he's not allowed to possess a gun. And he knows that. And again, the indictment, we've talked a lot about the indictment, you're gonna get it, it's a document, it's a long document. But the indictment charges my client with those three firearm charges, all stemming from one date, March 9th of 2022, the date that Mr. Kendrick is arrested. So what happens on March 9th of 2022? He's at a house owned by Jeffrey Williams, his friend and colleague, who he's made beautiful music with, wonderful music that's entertained millions of people. And at that house, the and there's dozens and dozens of people at this house on the night of March 9th of 2022. It's not like there's two or three people there. <coughs> dozens. And there are guns in the house. So, how do we get to firearms being in the house to Mr. Kendrick possessing firearms? We don't. We don't. There's not going to be a single piece of evidence showing that Mr. Kendrick's fingerprints are on any of the guns. There's not going to be a single piece of evidence showing his DNA is on the guns. And quite frankly, you'll learn, and the evidence will show, there's something called touch DNA. What is that? You're going to learn that 
if I touch this table, and my hand is here for a couple seconds, I don't just leave my fingerprints behind, I actually leave some of my DNA behind. And that can be tested, forensically tested, by the police and by the GBI lab and the state of Georgia. So there's no fingerprints on the guns that belong to Demont's Kendrick. There's no DNA. There's not a single person at the party or a single witness who says Demont Kendrick had any of these guns. No one is going to say he bought any of the guns. No one's going to say he sold any of the guns. No one is going to say he possessed any of the guns. But they're going to want to do a dirty magic trick and show you his past. He pled guilty to a gun offense years ago. And so he must have been possessing the guns. That's their theory. Assume and speculate to find him guilty. That's not what we do in this country. That's not what we do in a democracy. That's not what we do with our Constitution. And that's not what we do when someone's presumed innocent and has to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. One witness, please, that says the amount of country was holding a firearm that night. The amount of country fought one of the guns. The amount of country used one of the guns. No one, no one's going to testify to that. And why is that? Because he didn't have any of those guns. He was at a house where there were guns. That doesn't mean he was in possession of illegal firearms. <coughs> you could go to a party with a 50 people, somebody has guns, you don't know about it, maybe you do, but it doesn't mean you're possessing the guns. That's what the evidence is going to show. He was there. could have been a bazooka in that house. I don't care. Mr. Kendrick wasn't in possession of any firearms, illegal, machine gun, or otherwise. He didn't control a gun. He didn't use a gun. He didn't buy a gun. He didn't sell a gun. He didn't hold a gun. Not one witness. And there are dozens of people <coughs> that they could call to say, oh yeah, I saw Mr. Kendrick holding a gun, but not one. And there could be hundreds of witnesses. I want to bury you with witnesses so that you'll forget about the presumption of innocence and what real evidence is required. Zero, not zilch, don't hold, reasonable doubt. What will they show you? What will the evidence show that night on March 9th? Well, they'll show that Mr. Kendrick was afraid. He's a black man in America, and there's a team of people swarming a house with firearms. He's not sure if the police or not. But in 2022, after COVID, BLM rides, people like George Floyd died, he had a reasonable and healthy fear, fight or flight. Mr. Kendrick doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to fight the police, and he doesn't want to fight people who aren't the police if they're armed. But he knew that there were people swarming the house with guns, and it turned out they were the police. So what did he do? He ran. He did the absolute smart thing to save his life. He was afraid, and he ran. And the police caught up with him shortly thereafter. Now, he's not charged with fleeing the house. He ran because he was afraid, and that's a reasonable thing to do for him, given how he grew up, where he grew up, and the state we live. <coughs> and when the police caught up with him, just shortly thereafter, did they find him holding an FN? the type of gun is what described. Did they find him holding a strap machine gun? Did they find him holding a Glock? Did they find him with an AK-47, an AR-15, or any other kind of gun? No! 
He was unarmed because he never had a gun! There's not a scintilla of evidence that you should believe that Mr. Kendrick is guilty of any of those three firearm charges. Not a scintilla. Hundreds of witnesses. I asked for one to come to court and say, Mr. Kendrick was holding the gun that night. What about the next set of charges? They're drug charges against my client. But all the drug charges against him, possession of cocaine, possession of coon, the drugs, all the drug charges alleged against Mr. Kendrick are again from March 9th of that year. From the date he was arrested, the party at Mr. Williams' house. And apparently the police find drugs in the house where there are dozens and dozens of people. So again, I ask you, listen to the evidence. What will the evidence show? Will the evidence show my client's fingerprints on a bag of drugs? No. Will the evidence show my client's DNA on a bag of drugs? No. Will a witness come to court and tell you he was using drugs that night at the house? No. Is there videotape of my client snorting a line of cocaine? No. Is there going to be a witness who tells you that my client sold him drugs? No. Is there a witness that's going to tell you that my client bought drugs? No. Is there going to be any evidence that my client possessed, used, bought, sold, controlled drugs on the night in question? Absolutely not. There were drugs at the house, my client was at the house, there are dozens of people at the house. One plus one does not equal three. It's another Krispy Kreme donut hole for the prosecution. Zero, nada, zilch. You're not going to hear evidence that my client's blood or urine was tested and that it was in his bloodstream there was cocaine or other drugs. And the indictment says that the drugs that they're charging him with are from that date, March 9, 2022, the day he was arrested. Not any other day in his life. So the question you have to ask, the evidence you have to look at is, is he possessing drugs while he's at the party at the house? And there is no evidence of that, just like the guns. The next charge against my client is gaming activity. And the gang activity they allege, very specifically in the indictment, it's not just any gang activity, it's gang activity related to the possession with the intent to distribute illegal drugs from March 9th of 2022. And again, where is the evidence? Not one witness. They also allege that he committed gang activity based on the guns. <clears throat> same, same thing. There's just no evidence of it. It is not illegal to be part of a group in America. Freedom of association. Otherwise, the Atlanta Falcons would be an illegal street game because they wear red and black and they have cer certain symbols they wear. And the Braves, certainly the Braves because they lost in the playoffs. Maybe the state of Long would die death. It's not illegal for my client to want to wear the color green and do fancy symbols with his hands. But they're going to bring dozens of witnesses in to talk about that. So what? That's not a crime. Illegal gang activity requires my client to have committed a crime and being a gang. And why a cell is not a gang, but we'll get to that in a minute. They want to attack free speech and freedom of association. They're guaranteed to us in the Constitution. And if they want to do that, then they should go out and arrest the Falcons and the Braves too. Not one witness is going to come to court and say, Mr. Kendrick 
possessed, sold, bought, used drugs as part of a game activity. Or possessed, sold, used a firearm as part of gang activity. I want you to tally, keep count, take notes how many witnesses the state brings in this case. Hundreds. And I want you to remember this conversation I'm having, this one-sided conversation I'm having with you all, about how many witnesses say, my client possessed a firearm because he was a YSL gang member. My client possessed drugs because he was a YSL gang member. What is YSL? It's a successful, massively worldwide, internationally successful record label. And my client was a part of that record label and a successful rapper and blessed with the ability to make that music. And last I checked, those lyrics, which the state is going to try and use, are just part of free speech. We've eliminated the drug charges. We've eliminated gang activity based on gun or drug charges. So what's left? What's left is count one, Rico. Ms. Love told you that's a term that most normal people don't use for good reason. It's a very complicated legal term. Most lawyers don't even understand it. I'm going to try to explain it to you. And you've heard a lot about overt acts versus predicate acts. Are you confused already? You should be. They want you to believe, and they want the evidence to show, that Mr. Kendrick is guilty of this vast conspiracy because who his friends are, who he hangs out with, the colors he wears on his clothing, and the lyrics that he writes, the rap music that he makes. And they suggest to you this is all part of a vast conspiracy. But the reality is some of these lyrics may be offensive to you, and that's OK. Because in a free society, we have free speech. That doesn't make it a crime. The state says that the evidence will show that they dug to find out the murder and then used the lyrics to support it. You know, I watched Goodfellas. It was a movie about real crimes that took place. It was written by Martin Scorsese and acted out by Robert De Niro. Is the DA's office is going to go arrest Mr. Scorsese and Mr. De Niro. They're exercising their free speech to tell a story why can't my client, Mr. Williams, do the same and write lyrics about crime? Maybe they're offensive. Maybe the movie Goodfellas is offensive because you see people committing crimes. But in a free society, we're allowed to exercise free speech. It's the price we pay to live in a free country, and it's a great price. Just because someone raps about Murder or other crime does not make it a crime. <clears throat> Why do they rap about that stuff? Because it sells records and it allows them to creatively express their feelings about how they grew up and where they grew up. And they are proposing a war on the First Amendment of freedom association and free speech. They don't like those lyrics. They want to send a message to all those inner city kids in Atlanta who dream about getting out of the ghetto and becoming successful musicians. And their message is, you rap lyrics about crime, we're going to indict you and charge you and brand you a criminal. That's un-American. That's wrong. The evidence will show that the state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta have been blessed in the last 20 years by the entertainment industry 
and not just rap music, TV and film, and all kinds of entertainment, and some of it's fictional. And that's okay. It's okay to rap about crime or life or your experiences, even if it's not true, even if it didn't really happen. That's just free speech, ladies and gentlemen. That's not evidence of a crime. That's protected in our Constitution. It's a protected part of living in a free society. YSL was a very successful record player. And there's going to be evidence of that. It made millions and millions of dollars. That's not a criminal street gang. But it's not just a successful record label. It gave my client the opportunity to give back, to volunteer his time and some of his money. He coached an inner city youth football team. Does coaching that inner city youth football team support their RICO accusation? Because they told you the overt acts don't have to be a crime. Maybe now we should criminalize civic volunteer work. I don't know where it ends if we start making free speech illegal. They want to lump Mr. Kendrick in. They want to have you find him guilty because of other people's crimes or crimes that he already paid his debt to society for. So the state presented you some of the examples of that. Lil Wayne's tour bus got shot up. That's horrible. Whoever did that should be punished. But there's no evidence my client was there to pardon it. They're alleging that's part of this case. The shooting of Chanel Drinks you heard about, gunned down in a rental car. But they're not alleging Mr. Kendrick took part in that either. And what about the attempted stabbing of Ray Sean Bennett? Wyatt, who's known as Wyatt Benucci, another rapper. And the armed robberies, they allege. None of those incidents involve Mr. Kendrick. But what they're going to argue to you is that if Mr. Kendrick was part of the YSL label, or what they call the YSL gang, that even if he's not charged with those crimes or involved in those crimes in any way, he should be found guilty of RICO conspiracy, even if he didn't commit a crime. And that's wrong. It's just wrong. That's why they have to go to such great lengths and bring hundreds of witnesses in to establish other crimes, other acts, other incidents that my client had nothing to do with. It's a bad magic trick. Look over here at Lil Wayne's tour bus. If they actually had evidence of my client committing a crime, we'd be here for a week, not months. The conspiracy they want you to criminalize is being a rapper in America and being successful. They want to attack the First Amendment. They want to attack free speech. They want to attack capitalism because they don't like rappers who rap about criminal behavior in Atlanta. And they're telling you that this is a pattern of activity, a trend to attempt to control and exert influence. But really what they're showing you is, if we don't like your speech, then some free speech is wrong and illegal. And you should find my client guilty as a result. They don't want you to find Mr. Kendrick guilty based on his actual actions, just based on the words he wrote and saying. They don't want you to find Mr. Kendrick guilty of his actual actions because they don't have the evidence of it. They don't have the evidence of a murder or gun, illegal guns or illegal drugs. They don't actually have that. So instead, they've got to play their bad magic trick.
but you're smart and you can listen to the evidence and you will see it's nothing but a Krispy Kreme donor. That's what the evidence will show. You heard about wiretaps. It's basically the police listening in on people's phone conversations. And that's fine. They get a judge to approve it, they're allowed to do that. And there's hundreds and hundreds of hours of wiretaps. And I dare you to listen to all that over the next few months and hear one time my client saying, I have a gun, I have some drugs, I committed a murder. It doesn't exist. Nowhere. I'm part of the YSL gang. Remember, they told you that the YSL is this sophisticated gang, so there's no written agreement, there's no verbal agreement. It's just something you have to trust them with. Does that sound right? Just trust them. Take the government's word. And they're going to bring in experts on gang activity to tell you that the record label is a gang because they think so. Well, they work for the state, for the police. They're going to tell you what they want you to hear. But use your brain. Use your common sense. All those wiretaps. You're not going to hear Mr. Kendrick saying one time, I'm going to do something illegal. Whether it's a violent crime, a gun crime, a drug crime, or admitting he's part of a gang. Not once. In hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of wiretaps. And why is it you all hear that? Because what is he actually? He's a former convicted felon, a former gang member, and a current recording artist, a current rapper with raw ISL, and a current member of society doing civic duty. They have to point at his past and get you to only look at that because the actual evidence from March 9th and from January 10th, the two dates in the indictment that accused my client, there's no evidence of him committing a crime. The state turned over to us, the prosecution, Six terabytes of data in this case. Now, I'm not a computer expert, but I want to talk to you about what the evidence will show. A lot of that evidence you're going to hear and see. What is a terabyte? It's an enormous amount of computer data. And here's what I'll sort of tell you the analogy is. If it were pieces of paper, six terabytes would be 420 million pages of documents. <coughs> 420 million pages. That's how much evidence there is in this case. Is there one page? Is there one witness? One set of fingerprints, one set of DNA, one videotape that shows my client committed a murder, that shows my client possessed illegal drugs, that shows my client <coughs> possessed a firearm, that shows my client committed illegal gang activity, or that my client conspired with others to commit Crimes. It's a donut hole. It's a Krispy Kreme donut hole. You don't get the glaze. You don't get the donut. You just get the air in the middle. What did Mr. Kendrick do? Oh, they have pictures of him flashing gang signs and wearing green. They have pictures of him standing on the hood of Rayshawn Bennett's car at Lennox Mall. Oh, God forbid. He stood on the hood of another rapper's car. And they want you to believe that is the evidence that he's part of this vast conspiracy. Now, standing on someone else's car, it's a nice car, is juvenile. It's silly. Maybe it's even a misdemeanor. But they didn't charge him with that misdemeanor. Instead, they charged him with Rico conspiracy. Standing on the hood of this other rapper's car must be proof that he's part of this vast conspiracy they're alleging.
quite frankly, the real juvenile behavior is all these hundreds and hundreds of witnesses to try and prove something that doesn't exist. There are lots of other overt acts, and I'm not going to belabor each one of them to you because you heard most of them from Mr. Steele and from the state. But you've also heard from me. If there's a witness who says Mr. Kendrick possessed a firearm or possessed illegal drugs or murdered Donovan Thomas, they saw him murder Donovan Thomas and bring that person to court. Mr. Copeland, their star witness, is going to come to court and say that Mr. Kendrick admitted to them, admitted to him, Mr. Copeland, that he was part of the group that killed Donovan Thomas. You're going to believe Mr. Copeland, who has every incentive to lie. That's the evidence they want to rely on. That's what they're keeping here, us here for months and months for. The guy who was charged with the crime, who now says it's not him, it's my client instead. Please tell me there's something better, something else that we're here for. Please tell me we have anything near proof beyond a reasonable doubt. We don't. There's no real or concrete evidence my client committed a crime. <clears throat> Not a single offense. Not RICO, not gang activity, not guns, not drugs, and definitely not murder. Ms. Love talked about the wolf pack. I understand that. She thinks the evidence will show that. But I really think it's more like the boy who cried wolf. You know that old story. There's a wolf, there's a wolf, there's a wolf. And it turns out there wasn't a wolf. That's the state's case, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why you will come back many months from now and find my client, Mr. Diamante Kendrick, not guilty on every single count. Thank you.